Oh hey guys, so this is going to be a different type of video than I usually put out. Uh, X-Men Days of Future Past review, that will be coming very shortly, probably on Friday. Very excited to put that out. Put out a lot of videos recently, so if you have not seen all of them, go click on the channel link down here somewhere and watch them if you want to. And so there's that. So I got a request from someone to do a top five list of my favorite books from my childhood, just in terms of what's good to read and how I got to be more or less into books. The other half of it was, and this is like actually what they said, how I got to be so smart and into books and movies. And so I'll be answering both the, the first part with the list and then the second part after that. So this will essentially be a top five-esque list at the beginning. Uh, I thought it was kind of a fun thing to do, so I thought I would do that. So this first one is a book which I don't remember really reading a ton of when I got into elementary school. I might have. I don't know because that was a long time ago. But <laughs> one that my mom said that I read a lot of was Arthur and Everyone, I think, knows Arthur by this point, at least people that I grew up with. He was an aardvark, and the show had a bunch of different animal-esque people personified into, like, students. And so there was a rabbit, there was a monkey, there was an aardvark. Uh, just a bunch of different animals. And it just was kind of like, every episode you learn a new lesson. And it's just a good show for kids because it was fun, it was animated. Uh, there's that. There's also books that were kind of based. I don't know if the books came first or if the show came first, but they played off each other. And a lot of the content in the books played off of uh, the show. And that was the same thing twice. But yeah, Arthur, I honestly can't really tell you a whole lot about it. But... That's the first one of this list of books that I would recommend because I remember it being good and something that kind of stuck with me a little bit. So this is the top five list. Arthur is kind of just like one that I briefly remembered but I recommend to do. This is the top five list now. Number five would probably be the Boxcar Children series. This is a series which I read, I don't know, sometime in elementary school. My mom, I think, ended up reading most of it to me because they're little books but bigger than I was used to, I think, somehow. Uh, we read those and I got really into those. It was essentially like four or five kids who lived in a box car in the middle of the woods, I think, and they went on adventures and they traveled places and it was just really neat and every book was a different adventure as most of these childhood series are. There's that one, I found it really interesting as a kid and I remember it fairly well, I suppose. That's one I would highly recommend. Number four would be The Magic Treehouse. This was a series which was about two kids, a brother and a sister, who went up into a treehouse and it took them different places in time. So this is probably where my love of Doctor Who kind of stemmed from, even though I was kind of repressed for a while. Yeah, the whole time travel thing, going back to different periods in history, and you get a sense of history in these books, and you also get a sense of kind of learning a lesson, as all these books are going to essentially be. And there's a plethora of different ones. I think they go into the 70s in terms of them, and they all focus on a different point in history, and or a different thing that's happening. I think there's one in space, there's one that goes into the medieval ages. There's just a bunch of different types of stories that go into this series. I don't know if it ever concluded. I doubt it did because most of these books don't really have an over, overarching story to them, but uh, they're interesting nonetheless. Number three would probably be Captain Underpants. <laughs> this was a set of books which I really enjoyed as a kid because they were silly and funny and about a guy who dressed up as a superhero named Captain Underpants and he has two little sidekicks who helped him and transformed him into Captain Underpants. And it, it was just really comical, honestly. It was something that I really got into as a, as a kid. I bought the newest ones as they came out. I think eventually the adult community kind of realized, oh hey, our kids are reading about a guy running around in his underwear. This might be a problem. So I think there was some small controversy about it for a little bit. I always found it really enjoyable. I think they made kind of a spin-off um, about it.
about a baby, like Super Diaper Baby, maybe that was called, what it was called. But they had all these weird adventures and they were all really interesting and I, I just remember reading it all the time and so, yeah, definitely check out Captain Underpants if you can find it anywhere. I don't know if they're still in print, but uh, yeah, good, good series. And now my number two choice for children to read, and this is the Animorphs series. It's about a group of teenagers, I think, who are somehow granted these powers to transform into animals. I think they put their hand on them, then they can absorb the DNA of the creature and then transform into that creature. And it's just a really neat idea. For a while it did have a set story, if I remember right, through like the first 20 books of it, there were problems that were dealt with. They had a main villain for the most part. And then I think I read through like 30 or so of the books and then I realized, oh hey, this is essentially the same thing over and over and over and over, except with just a different animal that they turn into every book. So it does get repetitive after a while. But I found the story to be really interesting. I just remember checking out the books over and over in terms of like the next one, next one at my elementary school library and librarians always giving me crap about it. But it was still fun. And so yeah, Animorphs. If you want something sci-fi-esque, uh, that's probably a good introduction to that whole idea. And lastly, the series that I probably got most engulfed in as a kid, the Harry Potter series. Come on, who couldn't have saw that coming? Obviously, if you somehow don't know, this is a story about a boy wizard named Harry Potter who finds out he's a wizard after living with his mean aunt and uncle. And he goes to Hogwarts where he learns to do magic and he meets Ron and Hermione who are his two best friends and adventures happen and all this stuff, I'm not going to go into it. I just remember being on a vacation one year and just having Prisoner of Azkaban. It was either Prisoner of Azkaban or Chamber of Secrets. I just had it in my head and I was just reading like crazy. Like I remember being in the hotel room where we were staying and I, just, I was just sitting there not paying attention to anything and just reading the book. And then right when we got home I jumped into Got of Fire. So I don't know if I got through both books in one vacation but I was like serious about that stuff. So. Yeah, that's my top five list for this video. If you have any thoughts on uh, good books for kids or if you disagree with my list for some reason, leave it in the comments down below and I'd love to see that. In terms of the second part of the question, what made me so smart and what got me interested in movies and books, first off, I don't think I'm that smart. People tell me I am, but I don't believe it. I just know a fair amount about things, I suppose. I don't consider myself smart at all. And that second part, how did I get so interested in movies and books? Movies, I don't really know what really set me up for that. For a good chunk of school, in terms of middle school and high school, I didn't really go and see movies unless it was some big motion picture like Pirates of the Caribbean or Harry Potter or something that a lot of my friends were into and wanted to go to as a group because I couldn't apparently do things on my own yet. The movie thing really started once I started doing movie reviews on this channel, to be fr perfectly honest. Otherwise, I really probably wouldn't be seeing most of the movies I'm going to be seeing this summer. It's just things that are interesting to me. As movies, I think, have a different purpose in terms of storytelling than books do because we get to see a director's take on a story as opposed to one that we might create in our own minds and imaginations. So. That part of it, I guess, is kind of interesting, just seeing the different perspectives and the different portrayals. For, for instance, Fault in Our Stars. I read this a few days ago, or not a few days ago, I read this a few weeks ago, and the movie's coming out in two weeks, and so I'll be interested to see if my portrayal of it in my head and my thoughts on it are reflected in the picture that I see in two weeks. Yeah, just kind of an example. In terms of books, I've been into reading kind of off and on for most of my life. There were points where I would just uh, go really into a series or really want to read as much as possible. Like there was a Mod Heart Lovelace books at my school. There's like a list of 12 books that you were supposed to read by the end of the year and you got some sort of small award for doing it and I got really into that. And then there were points where I would probably like go a year without reading anything besides what was required in class just because I couldn't find an interest in something. It was really my junior year of high school that I really started hitting the books more or less because I had a teacher in high school who 
I had a literature class, so I had three literature classes with them. The books that we read in the class were really interesting to me, and I got really, really into them. That's kind of what set me up into reading more often. I read a lot of classics now. I read a whole plethora of different things. If you look at the book reviews playlist that I have, you can see how many different things I read and the variety of it. I'm reading uh, Huxley's Island right now. Um, hopefully getting that review out this weekend. And I don't know, just I guess if you want advice on how to get your kids into that stuff, just kind of expose them to it, I would say. Take them to see movies, I guess, animated movies or kids movies from the get-go, but then as they get older, make sure to keep doing that and bring them to things that you think that they might find interesting. If you want them to be really into movies and that stuff, or show them other stuff that's already out on DVD, get them a Netflix account or something and uh, let them play with that. Uh, in terms of books, I guess if the kid's into reading, they're going to be into reading. If they're not, they're not. Just try to expose them to it as much as physically possible. And I mean, if it picks up, it picks up. Don't force it on them or else they're going to test it for the rest of their life. But I don't know, let them read what they want to read. Don't force any classics on them or else they'll despise reading for the end of days. That's my thoughts on that question. I thank you for submitting that question, viewer, person. I hope that I answered it. It's kind of a different type of video, like I said before, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, fair, comment, and subscribe if you so choose. I'd appreciate it immensely. Make sure to go buy my short story down in the description down here. There'll be a link there for you to click on. And as always, my good people, my name is Nick Bell, and as always, keep on watching.